This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. So, yeah, so uh, we're developing a uh, promotional platform for authors. So our product will give uh, authors a microsite for the book and sort of integrate with the books and all that. Um, I wanted to just get, before we dive into sort of the code and, and talking about what we're doing, I just wanted to get a sense from the crowd. How many of you have written a plugin before? How many of you have... Please don't ask us any questions, the guys who wrote one. Okay. <laughs> um, and so how many of you have like maybe modified your team's like, function.php file? Most of us, okay. And the rest? rest. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Um, so the way we uh, got into this um, presentation is that we built something uh, for our own company, actually. Uh, we started with a proprietary platform, which wasn't WordPress at all. Uh, we spent a lot of money and time and resources building it. And then we realized that for everything we wanted to extend and build up, we're going to have to pay a lot of money and spend a lot of time doing it. So we kind of slowly started to figure out that it's not a very efficient way to run a startup. So we read up on Lean Startup Principles, learned that we have to first update the market and all that before we really start to build software. Um, and that led us to implementing this loop, which is the um, called Lean Startup Loop. So you start with some hypothesis, you build software, you build a product, you um, validate the product, that, like, that hypothesis, in the marketplace with beta customers, for example. You gather data, you gather their responses, and then you uh, learn from that. And that's the iteration loop. Then you build another product with the feedback that you gather. Um, well, how do you do that? Well, we used WordPress to do that. And we figured out a way to do it very efficiently, very quickly. To do that, we actually had to build um, certain plugins sort of a platform to allow us to do that efficiently. So that's how we got to the WordPress. So we haven't really started using it in the beginning. So that's... Now, <clears throat> this is our first version of the microsite that we built up. By the way, zine.com is we build a promotion platform for authors to, to uh, promote and publish their books. And uh, the first version of the microsite to the left, this was the administrative interface for the, uh, for the site. By looking at that, it looks pretty busy. And um, as we built this first version, we're very excited. We actually used... What's that? Yeah, I tried, but I... I this is really bad. See, get customer feedback, right? <laughs> No, that's why I did it. How about that? <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, so the first version of the site, something like this, we got carried away. We used the custom fields, and it was really easy to prototype. And so we built this, and we gave it to customers, we gave it to customers, and the site that was built based on this having an interface is to the right. Um, so by looking at this, People couldn't really tell how the site's going to look by the time they started building it. And it took a lot of steps, and you can see that a lot of fields took a lot of things that they need to put in before they even see the site. So the first feedback we got is that the site's really, it's not as easy to use as we thought it would be. So, so, yeah, so, so I just wanted to jump in here to just step back and tell you a little bit more about the administrative interface. Just we, we actually used the advanced custom fields model or plugin. Um, what that let us do is it gave me that user interface for adding all of these custom fields really easily without having to write code. So that should, so even at the very beginning of the project when we're doing fairly simple stuff, we're able to get pretty far along to a product on the right that we were able to put in front of customers really, really easily without writing much code. Um, what, what we've learned, you know, as I was saying, is our feedback was about usability. And so what I wanted to point out is that the question that we kind of got to early on is, 
is it more important for our customers to have more features or for it to be really, really easy and fast to do what they can already do? Yeah, so as you can see, the left, the, the, the interface, the book site's actually pretty busy. It's got a lot of features, and feedback from customers was that it's really hard to, I mean, it's kind of hard to build it. They didn't really understand how to use it. So we got, we got some learning to do. So the feedback was what customers said it felt like. This is a picture of F-18 in the cockpit. And what they, uh, what they really wanted is a really simple to use interface. So in the middle of this, between the two, there's this loop that's reiterated through, this is a learning loop, this is the, pro the, the process we're going through multiple times, basically prototyping a product using WordPress and learning from the customers from their feedback, and then building the product, simplifying to the point where you can actually get to the, uh, that, uh, that experience. So, so we started, basically after many iterations, we, uh, we realized one of the things that we can improve is login. So this is actually custom built on top of WordPress. Users don't, when they log in, they basically provide an email and, and the uh, password, and they don't go to, into account like they usually go into the account for WordPress. They go directly to an administrative interface, which is what we built. This is the this is WordPress. So the interface that you, you used to see is no more. This is the interface. This is how you build the page. This is as simple as, as basically filling out the fields. The way you do it. The page, this is how the page going to look, be laid out. This is how it's going to look like when it's finished. So basically, visually, you can even see how page is going to look like. Uh, by pressing edit button, you get a pop-up. You fill out the fields. And you start building a page very quickly. As you build the page, you actually can see how the site's going to be. There's nothing more to this than what you see. What you see is what you get, basically. You keep building the page until you get the site to look exactly the way you want it. Then you publish it and make it public. You can do this in 10 minutes. Under 10 minutes. People have done this 10 minutes flat. Now, so how did we do it? We built we took out, first of all, we took out a lot of features that were extraneous. We didn't, we really simplified the whole, um, you know, WordPress. Can I can talk about it? Sure, yeah. Um, so, so in order to build that interface, we didn't start with, you know, this is the interface we want to use, and then we're going to you know, plan it all out and everything. We just made little changes, you know, add a plug in here, try them out, and change it as it comes along. So we, we what we learned is a few sort of guidelines that we think could help other people who are trying to develop a web application using WordPress as sort of a case. So the sort of first step we did that I know a lot of people have to do just for a regular site is sort of get rid of stuff you don't want to actually need it. Um, if you're building a web application, you have to remember that your user base is going to be responding to it a little bit differently. You know, if, you're, if you're building a site for a small business, they're going to have the time and patience to learn WordPress. You, know, you can teach them something. If you have a user, a web application, if they don't get it right away, they're just going to leave. Um, so, the one simple way yeah, um, is there's a lot of really easy books to remove uh, features. Um, you can uh, remove menu items on the left, so there's a few left, less on the right. You can hide all of these widgets from showing up for a new user. So like WordPress, traditionally, the user gets to decide which of these widgets they want to see. Well, just get rid of them. You know, they, don't, they don't need that. Um, so and there's just like a couple of examples of like the act of the hooks that you can use. By the way, the, the, all the code that uh, we have used today to, to show you these examples, you can download that from our site. Actually, send us an email, um, and then we can send you all the source code. Um, this is another example of technical theme level. So you can on the, the top right is actually a free theme that I downloaded. It's called Bones. Um, it, I think it's easier when you're starting to start with less. So just get really really simple themes. Don't get 
a you know blue, blue theme premium that can do everything because you, you really want it to hardly do anything at all um, because what you're looking to leverage is the core WordPress. So don't don't go for bells and whistles. Um, but we have to uh, just emphasize that the reason we wanted to strip down to the bare minimum. I mean, at some point, you know, you want to use certain templates, but our idea is we want to build applications, web applications. In order to build it, to, to, to understand what we need to build, is we start with simple applications to test the value of the marketplace. For that, you don't need complex templates. You need a very simple application to test the idea. Maybe it's one idea that's very simple, or two ideas, but it's not a whole, uh, a whole template. That's why. So for people that are starting and startups, starting new ideas, or building uh, new ideas, new concepts, uh, this would be a great starting point. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so try to remove things the right way first. So try to remove it with a plugin or with the um, theme layer. Um, this is an example. We wanted to use the native image handling in WordPress. But if you look at the left bottom left screen, by default, it, I mean, that just scrolls down and down and down. It's like way too much for anybody to use if you haven't been taught to use WordPress. Um, so we just hit everything on it. And when you when you click one of the buttons, I just use jQuery, which is JavaScript, to submit something behind the scenes that you didn't notice. So there, WordPress requires you to hit a button twice. So I just use jQuery to click it once the second time for them. So this is sort of like a, an introduction to if you're thinking about prototyping, that you don't have to do it the right way necessarily. You know, you're expect to be throwing stuff out. You're going to build stuff and then get rid of it. So just don't do it right the first time. Do it fast. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, this is a kind of an example. Um, you know, WordPress does give you a lot of um, capabilities if you're willing to dig down and the code and use it. Um, we found out that most useful features for our custom fields are WordPress query and options. That's what we use throughout the most. Um, you know, we're not uh, saying we invented anything new here. We basically use a lot of existing functionality. We got patience to do that. And the way we actually uh, organize the code is that all the business logic that we build for all of our applications is stored in plugins. And all the site-specific information, site-specific code is stored in functions.php file. And that's, we, if you stick to that, that's basically how we organize the entire application. And it worked pretty well. Yeah, so um, I think when you're thinking about building a web application, it's easy to think that, oh, I should start with Rails and I should have this you know, agile workflow with teams. And I mean, you have this sort of expectation that you're going to use a real software, you know, like building something real. Um, and WordPress is actually pretty good. There's a lot of, um, so, of really good functionality under the hood that once you find the right function to use, it's actually really, really simple. So for example, with custom fields, you can just create, any, create one on the fly, update it as the user submits a form, and then send it back to the server, and the server will be with it. And that's something that is, they make really, really, really easy. And um, WP Query, you can, for any page, you can modify it however you want. You, can, you don't have to write any code that directly queries the database. You don't have to worry about table, creating tables or managing any of that. Just, just use custom fields and queries. Super, super easy compared to rolling something yourself. But uh, yeah, so so want to give some example of how we're using these building blocks using the core core features. So yeah, I can't read that. Um, so that so we in our in the application we showed you in that user interface, we we built something that's totally different from how WordPress works, but in very very few lines. So the, it's actually a little bit longer than what I'm showing you, but that's the meat of it. That basically the way it works is that we added uh, when you, there's basically a form that's hidden on the page. So that um, when somebody clicks on one of those sections, it pops up the form. You submit the form, and using Ajax, it just submits it to the server. So the way that works is that the 
uh, dialog query. When, it, when you're uh, loading the, to refresh the page, when you're loading it back from the server, we just uh, appended a, a query variable to the end of the URL that you're sending to the server. So if, you, if you've used Ajax before, especially the jQuery, it's really, really simple. And then we use a custom template uh, pattern so to sort of pull exactly the, the content based on how somebody would always already be in content. That's a terrible example. But basically the point is that you can have, you can have the user um, put a file, dialog slash whatever the section is on the page, and handle that on the theme number, uh, theme layer. So that's, that's what the example is of Bob. That's a theme. So it works just like WordPress would normally work, but the user interface that's, that's you know adding that functionality is completely different. Is that is that kind of clear? Because a, a little complicated. Yes, no. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so. This is kind of going going on with the theme, just the, the third sort of recommendation. So normally hacking for is horrible. Don't do it normally if you're building like a regular WordPress site. That said, um, WordPress actually makes it easy to hack for in a responsible way, which is probably something you'll never hear, but it's actually pretty easy. So the, the way that I recommend doing it is actually adding an action. So in a plugin, you can register an action to run at a certain time, and then have another plugin uh, do that functionality, sort of hook into that action whenever it's fired. So just for the couple lines of code, you can create a filter, and then with your other, so this is um, wp-login. Sorry, I thought we had a slide that introduced us. What we're trying to do here is that um, WordPress 4 doesn't let you modify uh, the form submission of uh, logging in. There's there's a point in the code when somebody's registering where it's just going to shoot off an email and they're going to lose the user. And we wanted the user to go straight to our web application, not have to go to their email and verify that they you know, are a real person. We wanted them to go straight there. So I just put a little filter in into wp-login.php, which is part of the work, and then in another plugin, the actual filtering process that says, oh, wait, wait, stop. Don't don't send them where they normally go. Send them where I want to go. Then you pull in that plugin. And so that's that's kind of technical, but for the developers, I think it's actually helpful to, because it makes it clear that it's really, really easy to extend WordPress even in ways you're not supposed to and do it in a way that's manageable. And other kind of management systems I've worked with, but it's, it's been harder to do that. So I think it's kind of cool that it's, it's sort of built in even though you're not supposed to. Any questions? Any questions about that? Yeah. That that's against um, the the next update you will show your pack. Yeah. So <laughs> there, there's you can use patches, which is something I've done with production sites. Um, if I did that with Drupal, there was some. Yeah. So there's show your thing and you can update. Yeah. Um, but what? But by doing it this way, if you disable the plugin that is referencing this hack, nothing's going to happen. So this doing it this way will not break WordPress core, but updating core without also adding those hacks back into core will break your application. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Composure is that you use uh, uh, other people's code as much as possible. We have, and um, you know, everything we've done was pretty straightforward. We really just started with existing code. We barely built anything from scratch. Uh, we just were careful of uh, organizing it in such a way that we can always trace it back. If things happen, then we can uh, uh, fix it. Um, we were betting on speed because in our business we are trying to help with the idea and we are not trying to build with the um, beautiful code that, you know, we were trying just to get it quick and dirty, uh, but 
accessible enough that you give it to someone that can actually download it and use it. So if you contact us, we will give you all the plugins and the code that we develop. And we, uh, it's in a shape that you can actually install it and run it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so a couple questions here. I think I would like to open it up to questions just in general about our experiences uh, doing this. Also, I wanted to get a sense of the community. Some of, some of what we're doing here, because we're organizing our code all as individual little plugins, um, it seems like there's an opportunity uh, for other people who are building web applications on WordPress to, if we could sort of identify best practices or develop a few small plugins that help, you know, maybe, um, like there were one plugin that basically like strips down WordPress and makes it simpler and gets rid of all the junk that they use it for example. So maybe there's an opportunity for a community to build something around that. Um, so if you're, if, you're, if you're interested in that, you know, come talk to us afterwards or shoot us an email or contact. Uh, yeah. On the next slide. Yeah. yeah and if anybody is interested in uh, uh, marketing, uh, inbound marketing, we're building a uh, platform to actually promote uh, office work. And behind that is going to be inbound marketing tools that enable uh, some of the proprietary, some of the vendors. Uh, so if anybody is interested in that side of business, uh, please help us. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you <laughs> Who knows? Well, that's a great question. And you know how we started to use WordPress by actually we developed, we spent a lot of money and we had a big team and all that. So we figured that's not going to work. But eventually you want to protect your product. You know, there was some proprietary code. So yeah, we had these thoughts. If we build a good product, I think there are some extensions we can build in a proprietary way and some by using WordPress as a core. We're experimenting with that. So I think partly it will be WordPress, but there will be some things that we'll have that will not be WordPress probably. But, but the core, we believe, could be, could be to be uh, WordPress. Does it have to be open source kind of adopted? There's applications built in WordPress and yeah, sure. yeah. there's extensions that will be. WordPress or GPL3, and that license says if you make any modification or you use it, just make it, you have to return that code back to the public. But if you just can't make proprietary, it was a whole big court case, don't think about the right? You can't use WordPress to perform something without um, revealing what you're actually doing. Well, it's a, it's a WordPress base, but there's other pieces to it that it's, they might not be WordPress. That work with WordPress. Oh, that's right. So it's not WordPress. Right, right, that's right. right. Yeah, that work with the WordPress. Yeah. So yes, it's okay to reveal the WordPress part, but there are pieces that will work that are not WordPress. Right. So, and the, and the point is, I mean, the, the point is that we're using WordPress when we're experimenting in WordPress. And sure, like there may be a point when we totally switch and totally rewrite the code, like that could happen. But the point is, we're, we don't want to worry about that now because I mean, most startups. We'll take off, so yeah. let's learn. We, we don't want to handle WordPress. This is a great tool. No matter what product stage we are at, we're always going to use the WordPress to prototype. Right. Because it's the fastest and the quickest mm -hmm. thing to do it. Right. And we'd like to build you know, plugins for other people to try it as well. Have we designed what you guys are doing now? Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can come talk to us after. Right. Thank you for this. Um, I mean, I think that we're, we're certainly using like the section tags, we're using parts of HTML5, um, but it, it, I don't think there's any functionality that we're building that requires HTML5 like new browsers.
what's you know what's going on. But that, that's where we can't you know, marry to the, the concept of just using WordPress. Yeah. Um, it's hard to tell. So maybe we can have a more extensive talk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we're we're planning to be using like WP Super Cache and some of the caching solutions. But at some point, yeah, it, it would be problematic. But we'll we'll sort of cross that bridge when we get there. Right. Yeah. Yes, and yes. It is production. This is why this is we can use it today. Because here's the idea: if you build these prototypes, they're actual products. If uh, if you read this book called *The Lean Startup Principle* by Eric Ries, the way we build software is not to build something that you can't use. We actually build a product. It might be a limited set of features, but it works like a product. As so, yeah, it is. It is a product. I saw some very tentative hints. <laughs> right, it's, yeah, it's, so, well, yeah, it's, it's a search software as a service, I guess. Yeah. Right, so, yeah, so really we're using it, it's not that everybody gets their own WordPress installation, we're, we're running a single installation where Multiple users can create content and have their own microsite. So, so, so okay. if you sign up, if you're an author of a book or want to publish a book, want to write a book, you get this site for free. Right? No charge. We host it, we host it. You get this and you can do whatever you want to do. Right? On top of it, we have services like I mentioned earlier, which is promotional marketing services that we're using, which is much more sophisticated. And to get you there, you need to start with something very simple, quick, and easy to get online. And start going into the content. That's completely free. Because you can sign up. More questions? Well, we have beta clients. We do have clients today. And if you're interested in publishing, digital publishing, and all that, we're going to be presenting at the news, which is going to be this weekend in Boston. We're going to be at the panel. Yeah, and we've been lately we've, we've been really leveraging customer interviews a lot. So sort of bringing people into the office and getting their feedback and iterating around that. So it's, if anybody is interested in doing that, please let us know too. Yeah, we do have extensive list of people that we talk to and we get our feedback. If you can very seriously we document every conversation we have, and then we look at the patterns and come to the numbers and those conversations and find things like that. We're very religious about that. Thank you.